Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I want to thank uh, Art of Factory, the entire team, for inviting me and making this possible. Uh, I'll be sharing some information about my work. Uh, and I will try to focus on things that interest me and how my work develops uh, and the different kinds of techniques that I use. So let me begin sharing my screen. Um, there. So I just have some background information. I'm Brazilian from Rio de Janeiro. I, um, I have a, a degree, a bachelor degree in architecture. I worked uh, in Brazil uh, for 12 years uh, as an architect, primarily with commercial uh, interior design. Um, I came to Iowa in 1997 uh, because of my husband uh, coming to the uh, Universal Bio Hospitals and Clinics to do cardiovascular research. And uh, I uh, end up getting my MFA degree here, going back to Brazil. And, and then I came back in 2002, uh, end of that year, uh, with a teaching position and taking over my former mentor position. Uh, so my work after I came back became uh, primarily uh, uh, furniture objects, installations, uh, design overall. And uh, that's uh, the, the focus of my talk. Um, so I believe, it, especially, I think that's important to my work, that uh, what I do, uh, it's very much impacted by the, my environment. And in my culture. So I thought it would be important to begin with just giving you some background information about the places that I've been, uh, because I'm assuming most of you there on the other side of this video know Iowa City really well. Uh, so I'm from Rio de Janeiro. I'm here sharing uh, three different places just as, as a, a, a reference point, but these are really like important places for me. Uh, the, the first one on the left is the Botanical Garden in, in Brazil. Uh, it's a place that as growing up, I went there so many times uh, as a child, as a, a teenager, as an adult. Uh, it's, it's just a fantastic place. I, oh, I developed this sense of, uh, um, let's say, love for nature uh, because of, this is one place that inspired that. Uh, the piece in the middle is a, like an aerial view of this sort of lake somewhat in between the mountains and the, the beaches in, in Rio. Uh, and uh, this entire landscape, it's something absolutely fantastic. Uh, the exposure to nature and this landscape and the, the plants and everything uh, is it, just something uh, you have to live to, to understand. Uh, the picture on the right is Copacabana Beach in, in Rio and a place that I, I used to go uh, as a child a lot with my mom and some friends. Um, back in those days, there were a lot of, you know, more nature like shelves and things like that. These things are changing uh, with, uh, you know, changes in the environment. So, but these three places were like really important to me. Uh, the other thing that impacted me significantly, I was saying earlier, um, my culture, uh, Brazil uh, has and used to have more, a lot of uh, popular uh, uh, events that are attached to the, the uh, uh, religious schedule. Um, one is called Festa Junina, then the other one is Carnival. Uh, and uh, for these events, people uh, dress uh, very special costumes that are really a piece of art. So I always uh, was amazed by the, how the, that fashions, if I may, uh, design um, are, it, it's just gorgeous and done many times in a very, like, say, um, by people that not necessarily got any design education, but yet the pieces are just beautiful. 
So um, I, I'm showing, sharing here three images. One is a costume for a child because I used to wear those. Uh, and uh, like uh, the party in June and the carnival that is very famous. So the, all the colors and the costumes and, and the things that people use to, to create uh, uh, sets for the parties are just awesome. Um, the other thing is that related to the making of these costumes, there's also like lace and uh, weaving or uh, not necessarily, not necessarily weaving in my family, but crocheting, uh, knitting, uh, in making lace, it's something like a Portu Portuguese tradition that my, my mother uh, uh, somewhat inherited and she made some of my grandmothers as well. Um, and uh, something that I see that there is a connection with plants. So uh, the other element of going to the botanical garden is like my interest in these drawings that, uh, and these archivals of plants that I just find gorgeous, the drawings and how these two things sort of feed each other, I always thought was very interesting. Um, as I mentioned, I got a, a, a degree in architecture in Brazil and this is the university that I studied, uh, the building. Uh, in Rio de Janeiro, which is uh, by this uh, by the Guanabara Bay, or inside of the Guanabara Bay, is it's it's located in an island, uh, which is the campus is in this island, uh, and this uh, architecture is another element that, uh, being an architect, you can imagine that I'm interested in architecture. Uh, so the forms and the shapes, modern modern buildings. Uh, by uh, living many hours of my day for five years in a row inside of this building uh, had an impact on, on how I see space and, and shapes. Um, then in Iowa, uh, it, it's like a, a big change coming from a culture, Brazilian culture and the American culture and being in Iowa in an Iowa City, which is sort of a, a very different place from Iowa, I think. Um, completely different tradition, education tradition and everything. So uh, th those two words were like uh, educating me. So my, the environment in Brazil was one and then I'm here and I'm seeing other things and learning other things. Um, I, I think that contrast kind of shift my head and back and forth, it keeps rotating in some way. So. Uh, on the left, I have images of the old art building that I experienced as a student and as a faculty member. Uh, uh, and the, the transition between the old art building and the new art buildings on campus during the flood uh, or after the flood at Studio Arts, which is also an interesting experience that should be mentioned. Uh, so just the the changes in the, those environments and then getting inside the, uh, the visual arts building, uh, just you look at the images and you think, oh my gosh, what? they are very different or differently. Uh, but they, they did provoke different things. And, and this is just, I'm just throwing that at you so that you kind of get up some background, how, thing, how much these things really matter to me. They really matter. Uh, I think it's also important to mention people uh, and I had uh, like two amazing mentors, uh, just fabulous. Uh, Mama Shu or Professor Han Shu, who, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm confusing their names. Mama Shu, uh, Professor Shen He Shu, and Professor Hu, uh, uh, Professor Hu was my primary mentor in the 3D design program. And uh, Shen He Shu uh, was my mentor because jewelry was my minor. Uh, and uh, I, I think I, I, a lot of uh, the things I learned from her with forms and teaching, the way she taught, the way her energy was something that I, I don't have words to explain. I admire and I think I, I got inspired by that. And a professor who um, the way of looking at things and unexpectedly creating change uh, and saying, why not this? Uh, 
that that the way he looked at things was a really unique way of doing things. And and I I I learned that a lot. So these two people uh, had a really like gigantic impact in the things that I do. Uh, so I want to begin. I not necessarily have things in a, in a, let's say uh, chronological order, nor they are in any technical order or something. I, I try to just grab examples of few things to share with you. Uh, so I like to do things with different techniques. Um, I like to learn. Uh, I think a, a life is a learning experience. Um, and uh, uh, so I, if I needed to learn a new software, um, I just need to find the time to do that, but it, that I find that interesting. Uh, I also find interesting if I needed to learn a new technique uh, or learn with a specific material that I'm not familiar with, I find that interesting. So uh, this piece was an installation piece uh, inspired. Uh, I, 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 it's always like a collection of ideas because I sketch things on my sketchbook. Uh, but I think it was inspired, and, and I'm saying I think because I think things collapse into each other uh, by by the 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 little things that my my grandmother did with lace, um, and this was an, an installation piece for the faculty exhibition in in at the Figure Art Museum in Davenport a few years ago. So that I like to make this big thing and see what people think about it. So uh, on the left, you see uh, 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 the image of the, the lace made by my grandmother and uh, me hanging these pieces with uh, the help of a former uh, uh, student that became uh, a friend. So most of my former students are friends of mine. Uh, so uh, hanging, uh, these elements is also sort of a craft process. So this piece was all, all done by hand. I sketch it with my, my sketchbook. Um, I did the, the plans in terms of proportions and everything, all the material research. Uh, and I end up uh, making it in UPO, which is a plastic paper. So each piece I, I sat on the floor and I just cut each one individually and I assembled them in units. And then I had it to hang in a process that makes some reference to the lace process. Um, but this also has some reference, um, but lace also has some of that, of these natural uh, plant, the plants that uh, you can see uh, how their structures are made. And, and uh, you, the see through uh, when you're under a tree. Uh, I was looking at like, and causing some kind of surprise on the viewer uh, by putting that installation piece in the faculty exhibition and people walking underneath and wondering about how the light changed. So as an architect, I like to, to change the space. And I also love to play with different scales of design, like from jewelry to designing uh, architecture. So this piece was about that. Uh, this idea of the, the, the using lace as an inspiration as I was sort of creating these, can I call them weaved sort of structures. Uh, I also did uh, one for a wall piece. Uh, and back in those days when I was making these things, I was also interested in the environment and materials that were environmentally good or not as bad. Uh, so this piece was made with recycled uh, rubber material uh, and UPO is also sustainable. Uh, the other piece that I made was this uh, wall piece that is still inspired by lace but not no longer looking at that kind of sort of um, organic uh, structure within the lace but the flower patterns. Uh, so designing and planning and looking for the material that's a plastic material. In this case, this wasn't sustainable, but I was, I want to test it anyway. Um, I, I want to kind of create like my canvas or my the, making the wall, my sort of my bigger background 
for these sort of uh, uh, flower patterns that uh, made reference to lace. Uh, also inspired by lace, so just sharing a few different ideas I had with the same concept. Uh, I, I recently made this set of tables and candle holder um, that uh, uh, actually these were exhibited in, in London. And I'm forgetting to mention where these pieces were, but I don't think that necessarily that it's the point. So uh, here I, I was hoping to create a set that is, has flexibility and can collapse under sort of, not in necessary glass, but go into under each other, uh, take more room or less room. Uh, and uh, if you're sitting on the ground, they, they, they have, you have the top surface, if you're eating or snacking something, talking with a friend and the bottom surface also acts as a place for a, a, a little bowl or your glass. Uh, so they're meant to be a, sort of a conversation. They also make some reference to uh, old Portu Portuguese uh, furniture back in the days that women that uh, were working with craft would just sit uh, lower to the ground, uh, more over like pillows, not necessarily chairs. And this is true in many cultures. So I find interesting when you change the height of the seat and you make people uh, closer to the ground, uh, how people act differently. So uh, th this set was meant to create that opportunity and also be used as sort of a side table or a table as a set in the middle of the living room. Um, sort of a, a mixture, as I was saying, I, I uh, looking at back to costume to, for these popular parties uh, in, in Brazil uh, and still kind of um, exploring the, the pattern of flowers uh, and, and thinking, okay, I want to create this also hanging installation, but this time I'm going to add the color and its color is, is an element. And actually this this installation was also for a faculty exhibition, but in the old art museum on campus, Universal Bio Art Museum, and was actually done before the other uh, installation I shared. But here is more like showing where these colors are coming from uh, and how these shapes sort of relate. Um, and how, and the, to me, the most interesting is when I'm completely done and I go inside of the space and nobody knows who I am. I'm watching how people react to these installations. I find it that kind of interesting. Um, still inspired by uh, um, these costumes, I, I wanna make something uh, for like seating, sort of a bench that would uh, have like flexibility and provide the, 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 the person who is assembling different patterns to assemble. Like if I have a unit, uh, what can I do? And I also thinking, we always expect that uh, the, the most interesting part of any seating is the, where you sit or the back of that piece. And I said, oh, okay, I think I needed to look for something different. Uh, how about I look at the under the seat where people pay less attention to? So I borrow from the Rick Rack kind of pattern and uh, I made it this kind of really kind of uh, organic at contour under the seat. Uh, and uh, here's a totally different process. I'm just sharing a few pictures of the process. It's like me working with technology and doing this, starting the sketches by hand, taking this into AutoCAD software, uh, then take moving this into the, the modeling software and then looking at how many possibilities I have to assemble these uh, and then looking for the solutions, the, the size and the, the length of these uh, tubes that you, you feed through the structure uh, and, 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 and things like that. So also pay attention to the weight and one unit by itself is not strong, but when you put all of them together, the, the seat becomes strong and can and receive load 
So this was uh, designed to be a computer, computer numerical control technology CNC cut. Uh, and then here you see me finishing the pieces in, in, the, in the studio here uh, at the University of Iowa. Uh, and here you see two pictures of the, of the same unit looking from different angles. So you can completely understand what I meant by really paying attention to the structure under the seat to call attention to the, the, the bench or uh, the stool that I was making. Because depending, it can be small for one person, two people, three people. Uh, and, and whatever it's decided. Um, the, the other inspiration here, going back to talking about nature, uh, being under these palm trees in the botanical garden is just unbelievable beautiful. Uh, I also spent my uh, um, high school and middle school years in this beautiful uh, school that you see right under uh, the, the picture of the botanical garden, that there were palm trees and the, the, I would say the back of the, the school would finish or the, the lot of the, that it was a big lot, would end in, 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 in connect with the, the, the big forest that we have in, in, in middle of the city of Rio de Janeiro. So, uh, being under the trees, I said, I want to do something that shadows are like the, the focus of the what I'm looking for. So uh, this chair, uh, I was sketching by hand, uh, inspired by the pattern of the palm tree uh, and looking to recreate the palm tree uh, shadows on the ground if nobody's sitting. Uh, this uh, then I played with colors and this piece can be is stackable. Um, and actually this piece was uh, selected for a uh, uh, national international uh, competition in uh, Brazil, south of Brazil a few years ago. Um, here you see it in black because when you make one, you just choose one color uh, and that was the one I, cho I chose. Uh, <clears throat> talking about architecture, as I mentioned the buildings, the modern buildings, uh, but Brazil has a lot of colonial architecture. Uh, it was colonized by the Portuguese and um, uh, the, the number of buildings that are still, you know, standing uh, at that are gorgeous is just unbelievable. Uh, and the Portuguese, uh, uh, the colonial architecture, has some interesting elements. And there's this one called uh, Musharabi, which is, uh, is uh, Arabic. Um, that it's uh, if you look at the picture, uh, you are going to see that is the the this green sort of wood piece that advances, um, and, and it's sort of a pattern that crosses. So the, the, what's the goal of that is it creates sort of a, a shade area where when you're inside, uh, you, the light is filtered, you see outside, but from outside, it's really hard to see inside, even though there are like spaces between the, the wood pieces uh, because of the big contrast between light and dark. So I was interested in that and I want to do something inspired by that. I'm, I'm still am interested by that. I just find that structure fascinating. Uh, so I said, okay, I'm going to create an installation piece that uh, will be done with circles. And the, depending on how I assemble, I'm going to be making different things. Uh, I have pictures here of three different ways I assembled them. Uh, so it's one unit. And uh, I was working with uh, uh, the AutoCAD software and uh, the pieces were, I, I made it this with 1000 circles. So that's the, the piece here on the bottom right is one way of assembling. And uh, the two on the top there, you see different ways that was put together and the kinds of things that you see through uh, the piece, depending on where you're standing. So that was another thing I did with modular. And, I, and, and the experience of 
uh, assembling is also this, I, I find interesting when you arrive with a box and you have about 1000 circles inside. Uh, and I, I had this piece uh, also accepted for a, a, a competition. So nobody knows where you're going. And then all of a sudden you just say, this is the space I need. And then you begin assembling and all of a sudden something comes up almost like a Lego, uh, but not for, for, for sure, not for children. Um, and it's I, I like that experience of arriving and provoking change. Um, this this uh, piece uh, is another example, and I'm sharing this one with you about like how landscape impacts me. So I went on a trip to uh, France, and this is uh, a northern of France. So I saw these stones and I'm like, wow, these natural forms that were eroded. Uh, Etreta is the name of this beach. And uh, I, I said, I have to do something with this. So this is back during the time I was interested in, in sustainable uh, material. I'm st I still am, uh, but I was really trying different things. And uh, it's sort of a foam uh, made, uh, it's soy based uh, for surfing boards. So it's, it, it's sort of easy to sculpt uh, light. And, um, but the problem here was that I was working with computer modeling and I had an idea in mind and I had a shape that I developed uh, so you see the process of uh, from the box and then and me starting to to create the shape and uh, then but I was looking for a particular shape and uh, how that overlaps with the mesh I had in the computer. Uh, so I was able to carve what I was after, which is this sort of stool uh, that is finished with paint. Um, Landscape in Brazil, now back and forth. Uh, I'm not limited to real landscape, but it's sometimes something else, like I just showed, uh, triggers the idea, but back to Rio de Janeiro. Uh, these forms are just like unbelievable beautiful. So um, I was learning about 3D printing uh, and uh, I said, oh, this is just the perfect inspiration. So I made a set of bowls, as you see here, and this is primarily computer modeling and uh, um, uh, 3D printing, also called uh, rapid prototyping. Uh, I made a, a set of bowls, uh, vase, um, I made more vases. This is same set to different perspective views. Uh, and then, that idea of modeling and uh, doing uh, uh, things with rapid prototyping got a little more ambitious and I decided that I wanna make something big. Then, I, 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 then is when you really realize, okay, is the landscape, are the plants in the landscape is all together and I think it's all together. But here I'm highlighting how these drawings of plants relate to these organic forms, these contours. If I go back, you're going to see like this sort of curves uh, that also blend with my passion for advance. So I think in nature, there's so many elements. It's like an endless um, resource for designers to, to, to make things. Um, so I said, I, I wanna make something bigger, but how can I print? this large uh, piece. This is a stool and you cannot necessarily tell the size by looking at this picture, uh, but was it's, it's pretty large. So I had to write a grant to make this because 3D printing, there was no 3D printer that could print this back in the days, but it could be milled. So uh, I wrote a grant to the Art and Humanities Initiative to the University of Iowa, asking, explaining uh, what I was doing and why, why I was doing, and I was uh, got a positive review. So I was able with that grant to uh, send my file 
to uh, a company that has a really big mill, which is they, the milling process carves out from different materials. So this piece was made with foam, three pieces of foam that were uh, glued together, finished with fiberglass and covered with automotive paint. And the process of working with this technology is amazing because even my name, I was able to send the file and get exactly how I want and where I want uh, all the details. So very much like 3D printing because the shape did grow in the uh, modeling software. Uh, one thing about this project, now that you see the size of it, um, was probably the most stressful, maybe in my entire life, uh, I have to think, uh, that I made. And the reason is that this was extremely expensive. And uh, I had no ways of checking the dimensions and, and the real piece or prototyping this piece prior of making the piece. So uh, I had to rely on uh, drawings and scaled models that I 3D printed many of them to uh, develop the, the, the shapes, understand the gravity, uh, the motion uh, when you sit and you stand uh, in relation to the, the design and what kind of issues I had to, to kind of foresee everything that could happen and uh, try to figure them out while I was in, in the prototype scale, uh, which is like smaller. So anything, this was probably the biggest I printed. So I was really nervous because if I was making a mistake, was not going to be a hundred dollars mistake. Was going to be the entire grant uh, mistake, and that would not be okay. So when the crate arrived from the the company in Texas, I was like, okay, 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 okay. I need to see what's inside. I want to. I need to sit on this piece, and uh, I was very uh, happy to find out that everything worked out just fine. So there are no gravity issues. This piece is just, it, it is comfortable. Two people can sit on this piece, sort of sort of a, next to each other. Uh, and it uh, was an amazing experience. It was a stressful, but was also an amazing experience. It's, a, it's really like a really big piece that I enjoy a lot. It's like, okay, I like nature and look at me, look at this red stool. Uh, I, that, that I'm here, so it's impossible not to see this piece. Um, this this uh, uh, stool is sort of a progression from the previous one uh, because I said, okay, now I have this big stool and it's big and it's beautiful, but carrying it around for exhibitions is kind of complicated because, hey, I have to carry a crate. And I did a really like several international uh, 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 exhibitions and, and it, it gets to a place that is like, okay, I need to get creative as a designer. So um, I think in this piece, there's a bunch of things that overlap that at, at the end you think of how were you inspired is the, the craft of crochet uh, and lace, the landscape, the recording with drawings of these plants, uh, they all overlap in this idea of it's somewhat, it looks like the red stool, but it all comes apart. So if you look at the, the right image, you're going to see all these are layers that come apart. Uh, and this piece also was in an international, was selected for an exhibition in uh, Slovenia uh, in the Design Museum in uh, Ljubljana. So we traveled back and forth and to other places as well. Uh, it does not mean that the red didn't travel, but this piece traveled more because it's easier to travel. Um, and that's actually inspired how I teach my students. Uh, we have a lot of assignments that uh, they are designed to fit in a luggage piece. 
So um, some people ask me, how do you feel? Is this uncomfortable to sit? I don't think so. So you should try to, to and tell me what you think. Uh, of course, it's not for working. Um, most of my designs, because of my commercial uh, experience with interior design, uh, they have this idea of designing for hotels, designing for uh, public spaces, designing for restaurants, designing for bars, um, where people gather, where people share ideas and they are relaxed. Uh, I, I like to, to design for this kind of environment. So that's what I'm kind of looking for here. Um, now nature and fireflies. Oh, they are just awesome because they are just tiny little thing with light. And uh, it didn't occur to me that I was actually looking at them and, until somebody said, oh, this is looking like a firefly. This is another design I'm going to share with you. Uh, but I, one thing I tell you for sure, uh, the, the sun going down in uh, Ipanema Beach in Rio de Janeiro is just something you cannot miss. You have to see it. Uh, it is, I have a picture here, but the picture does, does not does justice to what it is. So the quality of that light, especially during the summertime, is like, whoa, it's warm, it's something. It has that energy. It's almost like you just go there for five minutes and all the problems are gone, almost like that. So I designed this set or series of lamps uh, that I have in my home. I have two in my home in, in two different places. And I just love to turn them on during, especially during the winter when it's snowy like today and the other days <laughs> during the winter uh, because I get that warm light uh, from it and how it, 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 it distributes in the shape. So uh, I made a set, the small set and all of them packed flat, back to that idea of packing flat and being able to travel. This piece was in London, was in Milan and New York and so forth. So, uh, and when it's assembled, it's together and gives you that the, the, the light source is at the bottom. So it filters through the structure, almost like you have a sun light inside of the living room. I really enjoy that. Uh, again, the, the picture is hard to make justice, but the, maybe the, the picture on the left and the bottom gives you an idea. Uh, then I also begin thinking about hanging these things and uh, creating a layer of color, which it's like me, having a conversation on how this light looks like uh, and what kind of things I wanna emphasize. I wanna make it even more yellow or even more red, uh, but they have that same quality of being this sculptural element that uh, almost like you wanna gather around it. Um, and it, it somewhat goes back to that kind of firefly shape, the body shape of that insect. Uh, which it's also kind of like this little uh, light that don't last, but yet I think I, I want to capture that shape. It also somewhat re make reference to the shape of the sun. So these things kind of all connected. Um, and uh, I'm going to stop here because of time, uh, but I will be very happy to take questions uh about my work uh and uh yeah so um my email and my website i'm sharing uh with you so yeah let me know if you have questions i'll be uh happy to uh, answer them and thanks for being here uh my my pleasure to be here and again thanks artifactory for inviting me and having me